Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com. We are in round four of the match of the century, the 1972 World Chess Championship between Bobby Fischer and Buddy Spassky. Game number one went to Spassky. Bobby Fischer, not too happy about how things went down, went ahead and forfeited game number two. Eventually did come back to play game three, won that one with the black pieces. So he is here in game number four with the white pieces looking to even things up at two games apiece. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Bobby Fischer starts out with pawn to e4, pawn c5, the Sicilian defense, knight f3, uh, pawn d6, pawn d4. Pretty common Sicilian defense opening moves from both sides. Knight to f6, knight c3, knight here to c6. Things change a little bit. Uh, Bobby Fischer has lots of options as far as how he wants to continue. Uh, and he plays bishop to c4. Now at the time, this was kind of thought to be called the, the Sozin attack. Uh, now it's more commonly referred to as the Bobby Fischer attack. This is what he played against the Sicilian defense. He really liked to bring his bishop here to c4. Uh, potentially bring his pawn to a3, kind of a safe little outlet for his bishop to come back here on a2. Really like to just control this long light square diagonal. Uh, almost kind of keep it as a secret weapon. Sometimes his opponents would even forget that it was down here, kind of controlling this long diagonal. But he just loved bringing his bishop here to c4. Very, very powerful square. Most times your opponent's going to be playing this pawn to e6 just to thwart that attack a little bit, just kind of build up their pawn structure. That is what Spassky does, pawn to e6, and then bishop back here to b3. Now, Bobby Fischer could have played pawn to f4, very aggressive way to attack this, eventually push up with pawn to f5, uh, trying to break up the center control, but decides to go uh, for a little bit safer path and plays bishop to b3 first. Now, bishop to e7, getting ready to castle on the king side. Uh, bishop e3, castle on the king side. Castle on the king side for Bobby Fischer, and then pawn to a6. Just blocking off some of these critical squares here. Uh, b5 with the knight coming here to b5, the knight here to, to b5. Uh, just a nice, safe defense usually seen in the Sicilian defense. Sometimes a little bit sooner, uh, but in this variation as well. Uh, just a nice little solid defense. Black's not pushing up too much material past the 6th rank right here. Kind of just waiting to see what Bobby Fischer does. Bobby Fischer decides to go for the more aggressive route. That pawn here to f4. This kind of tells uh, Buddy Spassky exactly what he needs to do. So decides to start out with a knight taking on d4. Uh, so exchanging some of those knights off the board. Bishop takes back on d4. Pawn down here to b5, opening up the door for his light square bishop to get involved. Uh, decides to go and play pawn to a3, getting ready if he needs to to bring his bishop back here to a2 if it does ever get into uh, any problems. A bishop here to b7, just attacking the center of the board, has both of his bishop here on b7. And his knights here on f6, both attacking this e4 square in the center of the board. Now, Bobby Fischer has just one piece right here, his knight on c3, defending this square. So, decides to go and play queen to d3, centralizing that, completing his development, and also adding a defender on this e4 square. Now, Buddy Spassky decides to play a pretty interesting move right now, and it's pawn to a5. Now... What kind of happens here is this knight on c3, it's attacking this pawn on b5. And it really would like to just take this right away. Go up in material, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But this knight's also tied to this e4 square. And he doesn't want to move and lose the center control because the queen can't recapture here. So he decides to first play pawn to e5, which is exactly how he needs to after pawn to e5. Uh, Pawn takes, the pawn recaptures, the knight's forced to move. The knight also, uh, although attacking the pawn here on e5, it is being defended by this bishop here on d4. Now the knight can safely come up here on b5, and Bobby Fischer is up in material. Uh, but he's basically plays knight to c5. Uh, and this is kind of where Bobby Fischer makes a mistake in the game. He has a really, really strong advantage right now. He has a pawn up of material. He's controlling the center of the board. Uh, yes, his opponent does have a very powerful bishop right here on b7, controlling these light diagonals. But his dark square bishop isn't doing too much at all, which is really what he wants. Uh, it's keeping his opponent somewhat at bay. doesn't have many... Central pawns right now, this pawn on e6 isn't doing too much. Does want to be able to make sure he can get his rooks involved into the game. But all in all, Bobby Fischer has a strong game right now. This knight's attacking both the bishop and the queen. This bishop hasn't really done too much. Although Bobby Fischer really likes his light square bishop, uh, sometimes he can overvalue it a little bit too much. Because it's 
not doing much of anything, especially with this pawn here on e6. Uh, with the f pawn already gone, it's not going to be forcing this pawn to move. Uh, so there's less value in this light square bishop. What Bobby Fischer probably should have done is play the queen to e3. I'll kind of go through what he should have done and then show you actually what he did do. So uh, queen to e3, uh, if his opponent decided to take uh, the bishop on b3, that's fine. He could just retake with his, his queen here. Uh, if the pawn kind of pushes down a little bit, queen to d3. And we kind of look at it and say uh, things are still pretty good. This knight on b5 uh, is fine. It can come here to d6 if it wants to uh, later on. Bishop can always come. It's controlling the center the board also blocking the queen from really doing too much can always start to push with the pawns here get his rooks involved into the game this is going to be very very good but he's passing on the other side he can't really do too much he can't get his queen involved into the game it's kind of blocked off by this bishop here on e7 uh, this bishop on b7 is nice but it can't do too much by itself now if we come back on board and say uh, what did bobby fisher play he actually took with his bishop here on c5 the problem is when you recapture here with bishop takes on c5, all of a sudden, Badiz Baski has a very, very strong attack. It's going to be very difficult for either of these bishops to be forced off, and they're both controlling this king side of the board, and it opens up the door for this queen to easily get involved, start attacking the king side from Bobby Fischer. So although Bobby Fischer is up in material, he all of a sudden is under attack. He right now is in check. He needs to move his king, uh, and then all of a sudden, queen to g5, and he's under fire. Queen now down here to g2 is going to be checkmate, so we have to stop that. Queen down here e2 rook over to d8 starting to put pressure on this open d file uh, rook d1 after the capture the rook is going to capture don't want to come down here and capture with your queen that is going to be checkmate here on g2 bobby fisher just has to be aware of so many things going on because there's checkmates around the corner wherever he's kind of going here and then pawn to h5 so but he's basically he looks at it and says okay i've got a strong attack here i've got all my bishops kind of aimed over to the king's side this knight on b5 is pointless now. Uh, it can maybe start to get involved into the center of the board, maybe block off a little bit of the attacks. The bishop here on b3 is not doing anything. It's going to take a few moves just to get involved into the game. So let's go ahead and start attacking on the king side, see if we can start to open up uh, some of these attacking lines and find a, a strong attack against Bobby Fischer. But right now, Badis Baski has the lead. It's all just a matter of turning that into a victory. Bobby Fischer replies, knight to d6 does have kind of this outpost here, although it's not the best outpost in the game, but is attacking the bishop here on b7. Uh, going to be pretty easy just to kick back here on a8. Uh, c4, starting to try to get involved into the game, but it has a few more moves before it can do anything beneficial at all for Bobby Fischer. Pawn to h4, pawn h3, just stopping the attack a little bit. Bishop down here, e3. Uh, this is a really nice attack. It limits a lot of the squares that Bobby Fischer uh, can move to and control. This square here on e5 is no longer being defended by the queen here on e2. Uh, so the queen comes up here to g4. Uh, says, hey, if you're going to take my pawn on e5, I'm going to go ahead and take your material back here. So that's exactly what we see. Queen takes here on e5. Queen takes here on h4. And then pawn to g5. Also would have been pretty interesting just play bishop back here to g5 attacking the queen. I think I prefer this a little bit more, uh, but all in all, g5 is not uh, too bad at all. Now, queen to g4, a bishop back here, c5, knight to b5. The knight is not doing anything too productive. A uh, king here to g7, just bring into the center a little bit more. A uh, knight to d4, trying to find a little bit better move. A uh, rook over here to h8, knight to f3. A uh, bishop takes here after the queen takes. Uh, then we see the bishop here to D6. I think it would have been much better, much stronger if the rook comes down here to h4, uh, attacking this bishop. Uh, you see, if we see the bishop move down here to f1, uh, then all of a sudden queen takes on b2, and all of a sudden Betty Spassky is has a really good game here. Uh, can start to gobble up material over here. Uh, this just seems really, really strong. If instead, you know, bishop here to e2, then all of a sudden rook to f4, starting to put more pressure, queen d3, uh, queen takes on b2. All of these seem really, really good. Decides to go and play bishop back here to d6. Uh, now queen here to c3, protecting the square here on b2, which is very, very valu valuable for Bobby Fischer. Bobby Fischer realizes that he is no longer the aggressor. He's kind of trying to hold on for a draw right here. Uh, after the queen takes, the pawn recaptures, uh, and then bishop here to e5, attacking this pawn here on c3. 
a rook up here to d7, uh, and then king to f6. And this is important because you may say, okay, well, the bishop moved here to e5 to attack this. But if we see bishop take here, then all of a sudden bishop taking on e6, and the pawn can't take this. All of a sudden this has a very strong attack for Bobby Fischer, not where Buddy Spassky wants to be. So instead we see king to f6, uh, now king to g1. Both sides, since the queens are off the board, uh, want to start getting their kings involved into the game. Now Bobby Fischer, he's up in material, uh, but at the same time he does have double pawns here. It's going to be very difficult for him to hold on uh, to both of these pawns and, and keep that advantage. But he's passing on the other side. Uh, he is a, a fine position, but he's kind of lost a lot of his initiative that he had. He he had a better position. Uh, he could start to go up in material. He had a more active queen involved. He decided to go and give up that queen. Not sure if he was intimidated by Bobby Fischer or what, but I do think he played a little bit um, sub-optimally at the end of this game. So Bishop takes on c3 as we talked about getting that material back. Bishop here to e2. Bishop e5 centralizing. Uh, both sides getting their kings involved. Uh, rook down here attacking uh, the c2 pawn, uh, this bishop here attacking the f7 pawn with the rook as well, decides to go ahead and defend that. Uh, the rook here on c7 is being protected by the bishop on e5. Uh, so after the exchange, uh, this is all fine and well. Pawn to a4, king up here e7. Uh, both sides just don't really have a way to win this game. They're equal in material. They both have a bishop at the end of the game. Uh, so unless one side makes a mistake, it's just going to be difficult to do too much. We see king here to d3, bishop e5, uh, c4, king d6, both sides centralizing, but they just can't make any headway. After c5 check, uh, both sides decide to go ahead and Re, or tie. Uh, so at the end of this, Buddy Spassky, after game four, still has the advantage slightly. Uh, we have a win, win, and then a loss, and then a draw from Buddy Spassky. Uh, Bobby Fischer, on the other hand, down a half a point going into game five, where he will have the black pieces. So uh, all in all, really fantastic game. I was really impressed by Buddy Spassky. I thought he was after he had just lost to Bobby Fischer, when Bobby Fischer had the black pieces, I really expect him to come into game four and just get destroyed playing the black pieces. But he came out, had a really, really uh, nice variation in the Sicilian defense, um, had the advantage, I think, let it slip away at the end, but kind of proved to himself that he could kind of get back in this, even though he had the lead uh, with as far as games won. I almost think that he needed this as a confidence boost. boost. Bobby Fischer, on the other hand, uh, he still kind of thinks he's the best, but right now he has a lot of work to do. But there's many, many more games ahead of him. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the coverage. Uh, I'll be doing Game 5 shortly. Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.